Programming made possible by Kentucky American Water. Visit Lex, horse capital of the world. To get ready for our paddle today on the Dix and Kentucky Rivers, we are traveling to Wilmore, the last stop before our put-in at Highbridge. Wilmore is home to Asbury College and the downtown Wilmore Farmer's Market. Let's see what's in season for an easy meal on the river. Well, good morning, Joan. How good are morning. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You want to tell me a little bit about the Wilmore Farmer's Market? Well, we set up every uh, Saturday morning and from 8 o'clock to uh, 1230. So. Before getting on the water, we've made a quick stop at Highbridge. Built in 1876, Highbridge was the first cantilever bridge in North America. It stood over 275 feet tall over the river between the Palisades. The original bridge was replaced in 1911 and today carries only freight across the Kentucky River. One of Kentucky's most well-known artists, Paul Sawyer, often painted Highbridge from his home on a houseboat here along the Kentucky River. Paul's a very elusive character, and, and several different biographies have several different pictures of him. You could call him uh, uh, kind of a rustic uh, impressionist. He certainly was uh, a regional artist. Uh, people here definitely identified with the work he did. Uh, and there's been a great industry since his demise. Uh, in reproducing and reproducing and selling his prints and there are galleries devoted just to his work. We're here at the privately owned Highbridge Put-In, just above Lock 7 on the Kentucky River. This is an excellent spot to launch for a paddle up to the Dix River. Our destination is the Shoals. Here's some tips for the river before we get on the water. First, always make sure your boat is free of leaks or cracks. Make sure, too, to check water conditions and levels before leaving home. Never paddle during flood conditions. Pack a hat, some sunscreen, and don't forget your rain jacket. Even on the sunniest days of summer, a thunderstorm can't be ruled out. To reach the shoals of the Dix River, we must paddle up the Kentucky River to the tributary. We pass by Shaker Landing and the Dixie Bell, an old stern wheeler used today for tourist excursions. Highbridge looms in the distance, a mere half mile from its confluence with the Dix. As we enter the mouth of the Dix River, we will pass by the place where the old stagecoach road crossed the river and then wound its way up the cliffside to the Shaker Village. Today, instead of a passing stagecoach, you're more likely to see an armada of Canada geese. Dix River is uh, the dam. It's roughly three miles upstream from where the influx into the Kentucky River and it covers several counties going Garrett County, Bowl County, it goes quite a bit ways through there. Construction of the dam started in 1923 and was completed in 1925. Sole purpose of the dam and the hydro was for to generate electricity for the community. When it was originally started, it was for the Kentucky Hydroelectric Company, which was part of Kentucky Utilities, which is located in Lexington, Kentucky. So close proximity, central Kentucky, plus you've got 300 feet of limestone gorge. So but what a better place. You have an intake tower on the backside of the dam, which lets water come through the tunnel right over here, which turns the water wheels on the three hydro units, which in turn produce, turns the generators, which produces electricity. Capacity is 33 megawatts of power if all three units are running. As long as Mother Nature provides the water, we'd be running for a long, long time, infinity and beyond. So it's green energy, so it's, it's, it's great. Well, the, the benefits, Danville, Kentucky, it's a major, uh, gets its water from Harrington Lake, plus the added benefit of the plant on top of the hill, it provides water service for them. You've got recreation, you've got several commercial marinas on there now, there's bass tournaments. I'm a bass fisherman, I fish some bass tournaments. And it's just water sports, it's just a great place. 
This area of the Kentucky and Dix Rivers is steeped in Kentucky history. The Kentucky River was an artery into the heart of early life in the bluegrass. The waterway carried both supplies and settlers. In fact, Kentucky's most famous resident, Daniel Boone, extensively explored the area. In one of his most colorful tales about his first summer in the bluegrass, he recounts escaping from a band of Native Americans by leaping from the top of a bluff along the Dix into a sugar maple. After climbing down, he then swam across the river and fled into the forest. The cold water shoals are an excellent spot to take a break before the paddle back. We were lucky enough to be treated to an impromptu acoustic concert performed by other river travelers, some of whom packed along their instruments. It was an absolute blast and I can't wait to do it again. Sounds like a plan. Until next time. We'll see you downstream. downstream.